Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And with your spirit. Well, good morning, everybody, for joining us. We're grateful, just like in Advent, we have one Sunday in Advent of joyful preparation called Gaudate Sunday. Today is La Tare Sunday, which means rejoice which means we're closer, getting closer to the resurrection of our Lord. And so the priest wears rose, not pink, <laughs> and to be able to bring that joy in preparation for coming of Easter. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for, for me to the Lord, Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Reconcile the human race to yourself in a wondrous way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. There, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house 
in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of this people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. <clears throat> For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done by God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so as we began, we said today is the fourth Sunday of Lent. This is a day of joy, as we said, because the resurrection of Christ is near. Easter is coming. It's the first word in the Latin of the um, introit or the entrance antiphon. Now, it's always 21 days before Easter, always exactly. And Laetare Jerusalem. The Latin means rejoice, Jerusalem. And that is because our Savior is close at hand. This is the Latin from Isaiah chapter 66. And um, it's the entrance verse, as I said, to the Mass. Now, it's also called Rose Sunday because the rose colored vestments, different from the penitential purple of the season of Lent. But it's also used to be called the Sunday of the five loaves. Why so? Because the gospel that we use in the old calendar that was read today at Mass was the multiplication of the loaves, the only miracle other than the resurrection that appears in all four gospels. Now, the Sunday is considered, this Sunday is considered a day of relaxation from the normal Lenten rigors. Now, normally, each Sunday kind of is a day that we don't do penance, because it's a solemnity, even in Lent. And it's a day of hope that Easter's near, as we said. Traditionally, weddings, did you know this? Weddings that were otherwise banned during Lent would be performed on this day, and servants were released from service for the day to visit their mother church, which is the church which they were baptized. Hence, this is also called Mothering Sunday. So it's a beautiful day, and even more so, a beautiful passage. Do you realize that we just read probably the most known and famous of any one line of scripture in the entire Bible. Did you catch it? John 3.16. And I used to hear me say when I was a child, you don't see it too much anymore, but the man with the rainbow colored wig, I think it had a different meaning back then. This was decades ago, would go to all the major sporting events, the Super Bowl, the World Series, and he would have that big sign, John 3.16. And John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but will have eternal life. Now, this is important because it's tied to also the serpent, right? He's talking about raising the serpent in the desert. 
Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. We just read this in the gospel. You were listening, right? Okay, why is this important? The bronze serpent is important to this. Why? Because, first of all, the serpent is a graven image. Graven images are not forbidden in the Bible. It's the graven image, because otherwise you couldn't have a picture on your desk. Otherwise, you, you, you'd have to destroy that picture of your family. That's a graven image. The point is we cannot have graven images for the purpose of worshiping them. And, uh, and so this was not a graven image for the purpose of worship. The serpent on the bronze pole that Moses raised in the desert. The rabbis explained it was not the serpent that gave life. This is how the Jews understood it, okay? Okay. It was not the serpent that gave life. They didn't worship that serpent. They believed in the one who had commanded Moses to act and make the serpent. It was God who healed them. It's the same with us Catholics. That is the image of divine mercy. It's not the canvas or the paint that saves us. It is what that image represents. And so the power was not in the serpent. It was only a symbol. It was only a symbol to turn their thoughts to God, the one who does heal. So now, what does Jesus mean when he says that the Son of Man must be lifted up? That's his words, right? Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Why? What does he mean? Well, first of all, Jesus links this expression with Moses who lifted up the bronze serpent, as we just said, to do what? What did he, why did Moses have that bronze serpent? To heal from snake bites. Father, what does that mean? I don't understand. How does that, okay. The plague, this plague of death was the result of being people, people being bit by sin. It was symbolic. All right, so the serpent was made of bronze. Now, I bet you never learned this. I'm going to share this with you at the seminary now. We're going back to seminary, as I always say. But you don't have to pay, sit in class, or take a test. Basically, the serpent was made of bronze. Why? Because that was the metal associated with judgment in the Bible. Why? Because bronze is made with fire. And fire was the symbol of judgment. It is a picture of judgment. So the bronze is important because the people were facing the judgment with a bronze serpent, bronze being the metal associated with judgment because it was formed in fire, and the people had to look at the snake because the bite of the snake was the bite of sin. Makes a lot of sense according to the Jewish rabbis. But we don't learn this. We're just told you Catholics worship graven images. Well, let's look at what the Jews did here. And same as God commanding Moses to put the cherubim on the Ark of the Covenant. Carve them. Put them on there. He didn't say to worship them. Now, a serpent being wrapped around the pole, because picture this now. Moses lifts it up. You have a pole, and there's a serpent wrapped on the pole. This was the ancient figure of healing and medicine. I've mentioned before, that's the symbol of blue cross, blue shield. They've also lost their way. I don't think anybody at blue cross, blue shield even really knows what their own symbol even is. The symbol of the snake is the cross. There's a vertical pole. Um, the serpent lays horizontally on a vertical pole, just like a cross. Ask anybody at blue cross, blue shield if they know what their own symbol even means. And so for the Israelites, the only way to cure the snake's bite was to look directly at the snake. Dominion over it. You ever have a conversation you don't like with somebody? You're intimidated, you look away. But you assert, if you assert, I'm the one that is leading this conversation, you look them directly in the eye. And that's what you had to do with the serpent. I'm going to look you in the eye, and with the power of God's healing, I'm going to overcome the bite of the sin of the serpent. This is all the meaning behind this. We don't hear this. We never learn this. 
All we're told is we worship these images. My goodness gracious. So you would look at the snake's bite to look right at the snake to overcome it. And the only way to free us from the result of our sin is to now look at Jesus on the cross, but instead flip it and realize I'm not the one in charge, Christ is. That is surrender. If Jesus had refused the cross, there'd be no glory. Now Jesus is the one on that cross, the ultimate healing. Moses lifted the serpent on the cross because the Jews believed God healed through that image of bronze. Now we Christians don't believe, just believe. We know that the only way we are truly healed is to see that same horizontal beam and the vertical beam, but Christ now is the one we look at. And so it's the same for us. We can, if we want, choose the easy way, but then there's no glory. There is no Easter Sunday without Good Friday. And this is what our Lord is telling us. Now, you've heard me say before, we, we know why Jesus died on the cross, because the penalty for sin is death. When you sin or I sin, we deserve to die. Jesus died in our place. But you can go to the Easter Vigil now. We're getting closer to the Easter Vigil. What do the words say? To ransom a slave, God gave his son. So he paid the debt for us, which is death because of sin. His death on the cross was both a total offering to God and the perfect sacrifice of sin of the, for the sin of the world. So that's what we have in the Mass. This is the Mass, the one offering sacrifice, Jesus Christ himself, the perfect lamb. The animals were shed, the blood of the animals, to atone for the sin of man. But he is the one offering sacrifice and the one being offered. This is why we say the Mass is the only perfect form of prayer. It is God offering God to God and you are part of it. It is God the Holy Spirit offering God the Son in atonement for the sins of the world to God the Father. That's what's happening in the Mass. And the high point of the Mass, the concluding doxology, when the priest elevates that, that host, the chalice and the paten, and he says, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As Jesus said to the apostles at the Last Supper where he instituted the Mass, do you have any idea what I have just done for you? I ask myself that question every Mass. As that is elevated and we realize it is the power of the Holy Spirit offering God the Son in sacrifice, offering himself as well to God the Father for our sins and the sins of the whole world. We have at every mass here behind me, the cross. This is the fulfillment of the, of the pole that was put in the desert with the serpent so that the Jews could be healed. You look upon that and you are healed. Now, maybe not physically or, or, or every ailment you have on this earth, but you will for eternal life. You will be healed of everything. Well, Father, I really don't believe because I wasn't healed. My mother wasn't healed. My son wasn't healed. Well, yes, on this world, but in the life to come, if you have eternal life, you are healed of everything. There will be no ailing ailments emotional, physical, or spiritual ailing. There will be zero. You will be completely healed. And this is the meaning of this passage. And so his death on the cross means so much. This is why it says God so loved the world. And he didn't say just the Jews. Is, the Bible doesn't say God so loved the Jews that he sent them their Messiah. No, God so loved the world it's not just the Jews or even just the good. It is for everyone that he sent his son. It is for everyone. God loving the unlovable and forgiving the unforgivable. Not just the perfect. 
This is the mercy of God, the Father. We always think of Jesus. We do and we should. But how many people, when we see the image of divine mercy, realize that that's the image of the face of the Father's mercy? Misericordia voltus. Mercy is not just the New Testament with the friendly looking Jesus, as beautiful as that is, with this nice Jesus in the highlight image, the blue image of divine mercy. Rather, it is the God of the Old Testament who sent his son in the first place. God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. That is mercy. True love is manifested in the cost and sacrifice of the giver. And that's what God gave us. True lovers hold nothing back, but give the absolute best of themselves that can be offered to, only to their beloved. That's why contraception. I just, we just did a talk on, on contraception on EWTN. Um, I, I did an episode on that. You can find it on the YouTube. I went back to an older video I had done. Um, a lot less gray hair then. And man, were we lambasted because the Catholic Church is so ancient and, and does not understand anything about humanity. But you want to talk about understanding humanity? There's nothing better than the Catholic Church to understand humanity. Because in contraception, you are saying, I'm not going to give all of myself to you. I'm not going to do that. God gave everything to us, including his only begotten son. He held nothing back. And that's what Jesus was doing on the cross. Jesus held nothing back. He returned to the Father what the Father had given him. The Father had given him everything. And he gave everything to the world and everything back to God the Father. In contraception, you are blocking that. I, don't, I love you, yeah, I really do, but I don't love you enough to have another one like you in the world. Well, Father, I can't have 48 children. We understand that. God understands that. There are many, many, well, I'm not going to go into that topic now, but we, 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 we have to understand that it, love is the giving of the giver, the sacrifice. And so it was God who sent his son in the first place. Wow. God proved his love for every one of us by giving us the best he had to offer, his son. Right? We are to give the best fruits to God. That's why churches are to be beautiful. Another criticism we hear all the time of our Catholic Church, how criticized we commonly are because our churches are beautiful. We get criticized and condemned for that. The best should be given to God. The most beautiful thing shouldn't be your $20 million mansion or adorned in gold inlays and all that. Your best and most beautiful should be given to God. That is why the churches should be beautiful. Not plain white walls, that you see in other denominations, that's not beauty for God. Beauty for God is what you see in the most beautiful Catholic churches. We are to give that. He loved and gave us his only begotten son and when, 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 when we still didn't even love him. And so we need to give back. This is the true sign of love, loving those who do not always love us. And that's true forgiveness. Um, this had never been done before. And, and, and God's teaching us a real lesson. And we have a choice. We have a choice. I finished by saying, you know, look at what's going on in the world today. France. France. You had a choice. What did you do? You codify abortion into your constitution. Just the other day. They codified abortion into their constitution taking away all the graces that God is dying to give to them, literally. But then you have Ireland. Now, Ireland, yes, they've done some mistakes in the past and they're voting, but I don't know if you heard what happened Friday. Friday, they had two referendums in Ireland. And a guy came here from Ireland to see me. And I missed, I, I was at the strategic planning. I didn't know he was here. He came from Ireland he said, Father Chris, please make a video. Please make a video for the people of Ireland. There is a huge vote on Friday. I feel terrible that I missed this. And although it's a little after the fact, it's not too late to state Ireland had a referendum, a referendum to change the Constitution, to remove from the Constitution 
the very fact and statement that marriage is the foundation of the family. The referendum was to say that, to remove the word marriage and say any relationship can be the foundation of the family. That is not true. A sinful relationship cannot be the foundation of a family. The other one was the role of women. They were attacked for this traditional view, calling it archaic and sexist, because the role of the lady, the woman, to be able to help in rearing of the family. They wanted to remove all that. So this critical vote came up in Ireland. Father, stop talking about politics. This is the foundation of the Catholic faith, marriage and the family. It is the bedrock of society, and souls are at stake because of it. This is not politics. In fact, the church does say, read our catechism, that the priest is to be involved in politics when souls are at stake. We're not talking endorsing political parties. It's not what I'm talking about here. That's what is forbidden. We're not endorsing political parties. What we're endorsing is defending life and the family. And so this vote came up on Friday in Ireland, and the Prime Minister of Ireland, who promoted this, changed the Constitution, remove marriage as the bedrock of the family, rewrite the sexist definition of the role of the woman, and it was defeated strongly. Praise be to God. And that Prime Minister said, wow, were we wrong. Wow, were we wrong. Well, we can only fight God for so long. France, take a look at Ireland. Ireland has done a lot of mistakes. We, America, have done a huge amount of mistakes. But it's not too late. Praise be to God that Ireland, on Friday, realized it's not too late. France, we pray for you. America, we pray for you. America has an election coming up this year, and it's not just for president. All your local officials, state representatives, senators, all of those, you vote on the dignity of human life, the sanctity of marriage between man and a woman, and uh, protection of religious liberty. That's what we have to vote on. I don't care who the candidate is. That's what we have to vote on. Praise be to God for Ireland waking up and seeing what God is trying to teach us. Let the world please see a lesson, and on this joyful day of La Tare Sunday, let us also see the joy in bringing the bedrock of the faith into our lives, our families, and our country. God bless you. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life life of the the world world to come. come. Amen. Amen. Let us now offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father, who is rich in compassion and mercy. For the church, may we be filled with God's love, and may the guidance of the Holy Spirit be our strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may they be given the grace to act in accordance with God's will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For all oppressed by darkness or evil, may the light of Christ draw them to God's mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For this community of faith, may we be strengthened by the immeasurable riches of God's grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all the faithful departed, May they be embraced this day by the loving arms of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call or write to us, may the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. And on this beautiful day of rejoicing, um, I'm offering this Mass for our novice, uh, Paul Capps, and also for our lector here, Brother Chris. Today is his birthday, and so we're offering the Mass for him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you and ask for your grace and mercy that we may turn to the cross, gaze upon it, and receive your love, the love of your only begotten Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saint Faustina, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our, our daily, daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Come of God, you take. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of the union under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, to keep me safe. Union Antiphon. Jerusalem is built as a city, bonded as one together. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord. Act of Spirit. 
spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. From the diary of St. Faustina, diary number 153. One day I saw two roads. One was broad, covered with sand and flowers, full of joy, music, and all sorts of pleasures. People walked along it, dancing and enjoying themselves. They reached the end without realizing it. And at the end of the road, there was a horrible precipice, that is, the abyss of hell. The souls fell blindly into it as they walked, so they fell. And their number was so great that it was impossible to count them. And I saw the other road, or rather a path, for it was narrow and strewn with thorns and rocks. And the people who walked along it had tears in their eyes, and all kinds of suffering befell them. Some fell down upon the rocks, but stood up immediately and went on. At the end of the road, there was a magnificent garden filled with all sorts of happiness, and all these souls entered there. At the very first instant, they forgot all their sufferings.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, speaking of Ireland, we invite you to join us on our EWTN show Wednesday night coming up this week at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Western. It's also on Mondays, every Monday at 9 a.m. Um, we're doing St. Patrick because his feast day is coming up next week. And so we are grateful uh, to be able to um, talk about this uh, great country and great saint. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And we also today are beginning our Saint Joseph Novena because his feast day is coming up as well. So it's a beautiful gift. And so we invite you to join us in the prayer to Saint Joseph. This is one of the oldest prayers we have in the church over 1900 years old. O oh, Saint Joseph, whose protection is so great, so strong, so prompt before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. O oh, Saint Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession in obtain from me, for me, from your divine Son, all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ, our Lord so that having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O oh, Saint Joseph, I never weary contemplating you and a Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. St. Joseph, patron, departing souls, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. God bless all of you, and prayers for you in your continuation of Lent. Number 330 in the end. 330. <laughs> Hopefully you were able to catch our latest episode of Living Divine Mercy on EWTN last Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, if you missed it, that's okay. We have this episode and all the episodes before it on our website, livingdivinemercy.org, that you can view anytime. This is a great show about God's mercy with inspiring stories of people living it in their lives. God bless you and hope to see you on that website.